Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Frank Williams. This is the Frank Williams Show, where we talk about real issues right here. So, you know, today my guest is a spoken word artist out of the Bay Area who go by the name of Epitome. So, um, we're going to start this segment out with a piece by Epitome. All right. I'm starting to lose my faith in humanity due to all this insanity, and I'll do anything to feed my family. By any means seems to be the only motto. I wonder if I started a revolution, I wonder who will follow. There'll be another black, black man killed on the news by tomorrow, another march, another protest, broken windows with a false sense of accomplishment. But honestly, ask yourself, are we really making any progression? Constantly yelling, no justice, no peace every time we killed by the police, but we quick to kill each other with no questions asked. We'll watch the police kill another and another, and all you see is cameras flash. And the officer of neighborhood patrol has the right to take a black man's soul and bring up his past as an excuse. Why he gets a slap on the wrist and told not to do it again. Now he's revered and gained notoriety amongst other racist white men, and the cycle starts again. See, the problem is, is we so caught up in our own lives, we forget about our kin. Then we wonder why we keep getting judged by our skin. If we can't respect ourselves, how can we blame them? We are products of media manipulation designed to kill each other with no hesitation, and that type of thing's been going on all, on all over this nation. Just pay attention to your timeline. You'll see day after day another minority's life is being taken away, and they'll automatically believe what the officers say, even when the video's showing you the play-by-play, -play, covering up the truth until they get away. And we supposed to accept that's how it is? What kind of message is that telling our kids? Either you adapt or you fall in a trap or your life can be taken away? I refuse to live as a prisoner in a country my ancestors helped build. My ancestors' blood spilled just for the freedoms they keep trying to take away. They keep asking me why I'm so pro-black. I say because I'm reminded of it every day, especially when I look in the mirror. And I ain't scared of no struggle or pain. It just made me stronger. I'm built to endure. Any obstacle before me is just another door. Preparing me for my kingdom. Listen to me roar. One in the chamber, ten more in the drawer. Ready to protect my castle by any means necessary. Wow. 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 That's epitome, ladies and gentlemen. So, I want to thank you for that piece, man, and for opening up this segment. Appreciate you know, it. Because we're about to get into a little bit of this conversation. So, what happened... Ladies and gentlemen, is that we was on Facebook one day, right? And uh, he threw up this graphic, right? All right, I wish I would have had my thing set up here for it. And um, I think it had to do with Empire, yeah. right? And it was, hey, y'all, Empire coming on tonight or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, and it sparked the conversation with Epitome and I, plus some other people who was writing on there. But... It was like, you know, what epitome, like some of us who are working in the trenches, is about using what we have to use to get the message out about waking people up. You know what I mean? Like, wake up. Don't be getting caught off guard with how you being characterized and how you being uh, um, portrayed out here to the public, right? And he had a strong uh, sense of ownership, I should say, to speak about... Um, for example, glamorizing dope dealers as being having empires and that came from there's drug dealers and killers and how, you know, um African American people is rushing to the C T V to see that. But you know, we not some of us are not doing the things that we need to do to promote the good things that we're doing to make achievements. So that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about, among other things, about what the media take and how they hype it up and how they have us look and how we end up, um, so to speak, idolizing those things and what comes along with those things are the behaviors. And so he created a page called the Million Man March page as well, yeah. right, in which he planned on going to this next Million Man March and got other people. So I'm going to let Epitome talk a little bit about those subjects. So, All right. Um, as far as the issue of the... Uh, meme or whatever. Um, my my theory is is we watch TV on a regular basis. This is a the, this is something that involved in every person's facet of life. Like TV kind of manipulates or constructs your reality. It's basically art imitating life, but then life can imitate art. You get what I'm saying? Nah, so so we're basically just 
jumping in under the pretenses that, oh, this is how life is based on what we see on the TV screen. Mm -hmm. When in reality is we can construct our own reality. You know, I mean, if if Empire, all it shows is basically from from a, a blind person's perspective of not knowing anything about urban neighborhoods or anything like that. And they're watching a show like Empire. They're under the impression that, OK, from the season I did catch. OK, what I saw was it was a guy selling dope. He eventually started a record label. He went bad on his woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? She gets out. She's ratchet. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, you know I mean, it, it's 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 kind of like com com combining that with reality TV to a blind eye. All you see is, as especially with dealing with African Americans, mm -hmm. all you see is ignorance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You 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 don't see like back in the day, like I, I like we were talking about. Like, when Different World was on, mm -hmm. Cosby Show, as much as they want to talk bad about Cosby Show, but it showed a black family mm -hmm. that stuck through all, uh, all adversity in order to make sure they had a solid black household. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure you go to college. Mm -hmm. Now, those type of shows would probably, especially in this day and age, would be a lot more beneficial than just keep throwing out negativity every time you can. Oh, they finna fight. Oh, let's catch it on camera. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's like the whole world is based around a whole bunch of negativity. And I, me personally, I can't agree with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And as far as on the subject of the Million Man March, let me let it be known now. I am not a Muslim. I, 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 I respect Farrakhan for what he says and what he's done. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, me personally, I cannot classify myself as a Muslim. I, I have a lot of respect for those brothers. And sisters, uh, but me personally, the whole reason I created the Bay Area Million Man March group was to maybe get some people out there. I started doing research on getting buses, getting charter buses, seeing how much it was going to cost each person, you know, just to get us out there to hear something else other than fight. Or or sell dope or mm -hmm. or, or ratchetness, mm -hmm. and that's where it come from. It's just it's it's mainly it was just me stepping in to say you know what look if you are interested in bettering your community, you know there's been a lot of people who went to the last Million Man March mm -hmm. that have changed their life dramatically. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if given that opportunity to hear someone speak who only cares about your best interests, who who has nothing to benefit other than the progress of African American people, why not listen to them for a minute? Mm -hmm. Period. Well, I know you're about consciousness, man. Yeah. You're about raising a level of consciousness with uh, with your people, with African American people, with our black people, um, because we're like being miseducated. Yes. You know what I mean? We're being Very much we're so. being shown things that are really brainwashing. Yeah. There's a lot of brainwashing effect that goes on by yes, the media. Yes, right? it is. You know, yes, so it is. like what you were saying, what you was playing, if I show you Empire and that was your reality, that's all you seen about this these this group of people, then and you're not African American, you never grew up in an urban area, mm -hmm. you don't know anything about it, and all you seen was ratchetness and, and drug sales to that's what they used to create this uh um musical empire. And then within that structure, within that family structure, right, which is three sons, the mother and him, he's not faithful, right? Yeah. So he got he got women on a basis, right? She wasn't faithful. She went for his security guard. Yeah. Right? So which but she was faithful enough to give him 18 years in prison, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. For a case that wasn't hers. Yeah. Right. But and all she says is that she wanna bring her family back together. That's the premise of of that, but within it is a lot of it's a whole lot of underlining. Yeah, to the untrained eye. I mean, let me, let me put it like this: If you're a little white boy and you wait and you raised in your little suburban community, you don't even deal with black people on a regular basis, right? And all you have is BET, VH1, and uh, uh, the Fox. Empire Fox. Okay, let's say that's all you got to base your whole perception of African American people. Mm -hmm. Let's say that is all you got. Once, let's say he wants to become a police officer. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's going in. 
under the impression, well, I've seen on TV that all you guys do is sell dope and do drugs and kill each other and da 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 da. So he's gonna go in under the pretenses. I can't wait to. To, to fight crime, you mm. know, because that's not right, you know. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean, right. and 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 it kind of it kind of conflicts with us because it's like not everybody's like that. Don't get me wrong, and certain times people do things to survive. Right. You know what I mean, I it's been times I have thought about being a police officer. You know the reason why I didn't become a police officer because I have seen situations where, let's say. A mother and a, a father were both on crack, but they got three kids, right? Mm. The oldest little boy, say 12 years old, right? Doesn't necessarily want to get the newest shoes, but he doesn't want to see his little brother or sister starve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? While his mama and his daddy out there running the streets. Mm. You know what I mean? He like, well, the only way I can pay these bills or if I can put some food on the table mm. and we need it now. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It ain't like, you know what I mean? Them, 30 day notices and all that don't come until right before them 15 day notices. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you got a 15 day notice. My mama and my daddy ain't around. What am I gonna do in order to pay these bills to make sure my brother and sister still got a roof over their head? Mm -hmm. And so they might have to resort to doing negative things. Now, don't that doesn't make that person a bad person. They just want to provide for the, for their household. Well, let me hit you on that, because since we was talking about the media and we used the empire, I got to be a devil advocate, okay. you know, seeing that this is a show, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I want to say then, well, what about those that watch Good Times? I mean, there go a show. You had a, you had a strong father figure in the house, oh, yeah. right? Uh -huh. You had the mother who was a strong mother figure in yeah. the house, didn't take no nonsense from her kids. She made, Whenever they acted up, she said, don't, and they didn't, mm -hmm. right? Um who struggled, though, in the urban, lived in the projects, the Cabrini Greens in Chicago. Yeah. Star, and here, and it was more of a reality because he some days he worked, some days he didn't. Yeah. He didn't have an eighth grade education, so he got minimum wage jobs. Yeah. Some, some hired him where he could have got promoted to foreman's. A lot of times he didn't get it because of his educational background. And situation that happened within there where J.J. wanted to go pick pockets and find money yeah, and some yeah, more yeah, stuff. Yeah. And the family will talk him out of them. Situation show where Lil Michael, they forced him into a game, mm -hmm. you know, and daddy stood up and took a bullet for him. So when we look at shows like that, some some people grew up watching that show saying but as you well, dad, you know what? I ain't got to go sell no dope. But that was a whole nother generation, out. though. That was a whole. That was your generation. Now think about it. Now that's why you're on TV right now. That's why you got your head on straight. Is because you had that. You had good times. The the nine the eighties and the nineties. We had different world and and uh, Cosby Show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then they just stopped all the positive stuff. Like you you notice if you watch you can't click through no TV. Or you can watch reruns of. Good times, reruns of different world, but it, it's not like it evolved to the times of today. Now, if we still had those type of shows mm -hmm. where it showed that same black family doing those same things, why not? So tell me why you think we don't have them. Because they know that we'll harness the power that they keep trying to take away from us. Or that they try to say that we don't have. Or, you know, it, it fits into their rhetoric. You know, they, it makes them... It makes their points proven, you know? See, if you flick through the TV, you'll see eight different shows with this white doctor, and he's saving a million different lives every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or an Asian doctor or whatever, you know what I mean? They'll show white one black doctor, and he always got to be a bad guy, or he has to be on crack on the side. Or, so, you know what I mean? It ain't never just a, a good show where it's just positive. black, just positive, mm. you know what I mean? Positive black role models. So, I, what do you think um, the effect of negative airing of African American is doing to a to today uh, era? For example, you know, now I'm gonna piggyback on. I use an example, love and hip hop. Yeah. Um, I was just having a conversation with with a, a group of youngsters yesterday uh, outside my agency about how. Um, What's being perpetuated to them to take on and honor, for example, not to be happy with yourself. So everybody getting butt butt blown up when they yeah. getting their lips done and they getting their breast implants and they social modeling this on reality shows like 
this is what you're supposed to be doing and exactly. not like your hair, but wear these different weaves all the way down to and to wear the short skirts and 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 look here and even be okay with being a side chick. Yeah, yeah, man. Is even, this becoming a new reality? I mean, this is what that's why I say it's gonna be art. Is it, art reflecting life, or it's gonna be life reflecting art? But either way, you know what I mean. We need to determine that they cannot define us as 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 a culture. You know what I mean? If you strive to be better than what you are, you know what I mean? You you don't have to live in the confines of what TV says is cool. You don't. You know what I mean? I dress how I want to dress. You know what I mean? I don't got to buy no whole bunch of million dollar shoes, a thousand dollar clothes. I don't got to do that, but I still look swagged out. You know what I mean? It's because I, 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 I way I carry myself, the way the fact that don't let dollar signs define who you are as a person. You know what I mean? And and you can't live, let TV control how you view yourself. You know what I mean? I, I, I would never let TV define me as a person. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I don't follow trends. I create trends. You know, that's a, that should be everybody's mind state. You shouldn't feel like you should be confined to a box of how everybody else looks or how what makes everybody cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I watch reality TV, and I really get perturbed by, like, halfway, and even halfway. I say before the commercial is over because nine times out of ten, they already... I remember one time I was standing outside and all I heard was yum, 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 yum. sound like little dogs barking. It was some females arguing on there. You know what I mean? I mean, like, come on, bud. Like, we, we better than that. I see so much for us. We got potential. We just got to harness that and just use it to our, our, our abilities, man. I mean, come well, on. I think I mean, it's a psychological called game, man, a population control, man, yeah. because of the simple reason that now, even though you spoke on during the era of of um, Bill Cosby show yeah. and and different worlds and there were some who ended up going to college because they looked up to what they was doing but you gotta also remember that was during the era of the crack epidemic yes. so it was still a whole lot of people that wasn't watching that who was off in another world from watching stuff like Miami Vice and all that yeah, yeah, yeah. who was getting swayed in into the drug world right yeah. and so when we look at um Things like, even if we go back to Scarface, right, and then yeah. we go and we speed back up to Empire, drama will always sell, no matter what. When they turn on Love and Hip Hop, it's drama. They turn on Basketball Wise, it's drama. And it's just, but but the roles, then, these are prior television shows as well with a twist to it. Because all of them got drama, it's just different players, and so it's no longer dynasty. Yeah. You with me? Yeah, yeah. It's no longer dynasty during the time with Bill Cosby, because yeah. you had them looking at dynasty, yeah. and that's when the B word got famous, <laughs> was yeah, through yeah, dynasty, yeah, yeah, and yeah. a lot of people don't remember that, but I remember Joan Collins coming on in, coming out, and while she was on the air saying the B word, Prince had made a song called Irresistible Beat. Yeah, and it yeah, just, yeah, yeah. then ever since then, the word just been, so now you're able right. to say it on TV and some more stuff. Before yeah. then, you used to get censored, right? So my point is that drama always sell. Drama is a, is a, is a, is a ticket. But how do we, Epitome, I know you use your art. I know you use the poetry. You're in the poetry scene, man. You got some other graphic, um, Real powerful, uh, social conscious because you're a social con, but you also do some few love poems too. Yeah, and they yeah. and and they so creative because they paint pictures and women love to hear them. It's not as as um, well, I just leave it at that. It's it's where women don't mind hearing it, and yeah, it's just yeah, like a yeah. lovely thing. Yeah. Uh, so, what is your passion, man? What what make you speak out against stuff? What is your passion? Why do you even write the way you write? What is your passion? I've been through so much in life, man. Um, one thing that kind of still bothers me to this day, um, and I hope you watching, um, the officer that killed Oscar Grant, right? Five months prior to him killing Oscar Grant, me and him had an altercation downtown. Um, got sprayed with mace with handcuffs behind my back and threatened to beat me with his billy club and and once I went through that, right? Case got dropped or everything else. Public record, you can look it up. 
But once the case got dropped, uh, I'm asleep. I'm asleep on the couch. I hear bar police and kill somebody. Right? And I'm, and you know, I hadn't even looked at the TV at the time. I'm like, well, it'd be messed up if it was that same officer that killed, I mean, that was spray me and yeah. got me. Right? So I turn around, look at the TV, and then lo and behold, his face is on the screen. Right? After that, okay. This is right after I got out, right? So for that same thing, when once they dropped the case, prior to that, if you Google Mean Streets of Oakland, you'll see a video clip of me doing spoken word downtown Oakland. All right. I hadn't seen it, but it aired during the time that I was in jail for that, right? Mm. So I'm coming down the street. I'm seeing people where they walking up good, good, good stuff, good stuff. I'm like, what is you talking about? Like, yeah, you know I mean, I'm shaking people hand like, yeah, mm. like, whatever. Right? They're like, uh, yeah, we saw you on TV the other night. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, when you did that little poetry by Walgreens. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, I still hadn't seen it at that point. You feel me? But the fact that everybody liked it so much is what caused me to just run with it. So, you know, uh, spoken word, that's how spoken word became one of my things, you know. Well, man, you know, we sure are glad to have you on our show, man. You, <laughs> you know, know, time flies by. All day. <laughs> I can talk with you, man. You know, and that, that's why I have people on my show that's passionate. They're working these trenches, man, because you in them trenches. Yeah, you man. out there doing it. You done put this page together. You getting people together. Go to this million man march. You about consciousness. You about people living right. You just want people to have be able to have a real dream and reach it and not have it all, all damaged by thinking they have to be a drug dealer or something in order to go get it, that they can go get it the right way, man. And for that, man, I, I, I commend you, and I am so happy to have you on this show, man. Brother, it's a, it's, it's a blessing. Uh, all right. I appreciate it. Oh, I also have a book coming out, so yeah, y'all be on the lookout. It. It's called Messiah Goodwill. It's going to be a... Uh, uh, spin off of all. It's basically gonna deal with r race relations. You're gonna love it. Believe me. And how can they it. get in contact with you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at uh, Harold Desmond, or you can find me on Instagram at e Epitome510. You can find me on Twitter at Epitome510. You know? All right. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. That's it for the night. I guess tonight was Mr. Epitome, a spoken word artist out of the Bay Area prolific social conscious poet. I want to thank you for tuning in to a Frank Williams show where we talk about real issues. Good night. Sing it! Sing it! Sing it!